All right, so I've been about as awful as one could be with recording this particular series, and for that I apologize. But, you know, you kind of forget, you get wrapped up in other things. And um, I've been kind of regretting this particular week, week two, which is week seven. And it's not because it's against the Cowboys, but it's because, because week six was not great, okay? And here's why it wasn't great. We did win 38-13 to against the Redskins. Here lies the problem. My footage was corrupted. So, I mean, you can't see any of this game. I'll show you what happened just so we know. Kirk Cousins came out at a, at a day. 157 yards only, but two touchdowns, no interceptions. It was sacked three times, so was Bryant Hoyer. 13 for 18. They didn't throw the ball that much. Although he was very effective when he did on our pass defense, Brian Hoyer. He had a decent game as well. Wasn't picked off. No touchdowns, though. We got most of our, um, our touchdowns from Carlos Hyde, who had an absolute day. 17 rushes, 135 yards, and three touchdowns, 7.9 yards per carry. We're going to mess with the sliders a bit to make this a bit tougher. Receiving, Jordan Reed, four, rush, excuse me, four catches, 39 yards, led the game. Although Aldrick Robinson, three catches, 78 yards. I don't even remember what happened with that. It was a while ago. Our touchdowns were scored by, or excuse me, their touchdowns were Terrell Pryor and Brian Quick. Blocking, Gary Gilliam, Gilliam gave up two sacks. The rest of the line was solid. And then defensively, our sacks came from a bunch of different players. Xavier Cooper, Tank Carradine, and DeForest Buckner. Interceptions, obviously there were none. I don't remember if we had any forced fumbles. I don't think so. Uh, so we had two, actually. Xavier Cooper and DeForest Buckner, although I don't think we recovered any of them. We did not. Defensive touchdowns, there were none. So that was week six for you. Um, pretty weak, I know. Sorry, you couldn't see it. But we're going to go ahead and mess with the sliders a bit. Try to make things a bit better for us here. Well, not when I say better, I mean more of a challenge. So these are the sliders we've been playing at, and they've been pretty good. They have been. But we're going to make the CPU skill. I mean, they've been accurate. Their pass blocking has been good enough. I don't feel the need to change anything there. Their run blocking is up pretty high, and their pass defense reaction time is high. Their interceptions are pretty high. Pass coverage is pretty high. Tackling, I like that where that is. Run blocking, we're going to tweak this to like a 32. Maybe we're going we're gonna to play it at a 30. QB accuracy, I feel like we're fine. And as you can see, player skill, interceptions aren't that high. Pass coverage, not that high. Pass defense reaction time, not that high. A lot of these are not that high. We just happen to come out here and play really, really well against the Redskins, maybe. I don't know. We're 3-3, three and three, though, which, I mean, I'm not really a huge fan of that. And I got to say, I know this was a really short video, and I don't really necessarily want to end it here, but I'm not going to title the video like Week 6 and Week 7. So... I guess in the meantime, I'll show you guys our top prospects. So I'll do like week six and top prospects. So I'm looking at quarterbacks. I like Craig Dellenbach out of Texas A&M. A throw power, B plus throw accuracy, short B throw mid. Looks like a good player. We also have some running backs. Of course, Carlos Hyde's a free agent. Might have to look that way. Here's Allen Overstreet. Also got uh, Trey Schumann out of Notre Dame. Good receiver there. Taiwan Fair, middle linebacker. We do need uh, help at that position. There are a number of players I have watched. Shaden Wilfork out of Texas looks unbelievable. So, I mean, you do have to look at some of these players, and even though they aren't necessarily at their your biggest positions of need, you got to count them in. Because if they're a superstar player, I mean, sometimes you got to pull the trigger. So a guy like Shaden Wilfork is very, very good. Trey Pierre-Paul, another guy that looks pretty good. Not amazing. It's just like, you know, it's kind of tough to say at this point. you got to see 40 times and all that. We're going to come back to scouting here and uh, take a look at a bunch of these guys, scout them in bulk. Uh, Dixon Bianca Batuka looks kind of good. That's, that's not great. <laughs> B press isn't bad, no zone, no press. See, a lot of these guys, like they're not tremendous players. Big injury decision, who's injured? Injuries was another thing, that's what, okay. Um, we got to fix injury sliders. Injuries happen all the time. I also wish I didn't click that. We're going to start Gary Gilliam, though. Here's what I want to happen. I want to turn the injury sliders down because those happen far too often in this league. These are the settings, by the way. People didn't like that it's all pro, but with the sliders, like, it's not that injury. I want that to stay on. Quarter length, everything there is fine. 
What I don't want though is players getting injured every other play. So gameplay sliders, we're gonna turn that down a bit. This was actually somehow a productive uh, episode. We're gonna turn that down to like 15. Players get injured all the time. It's unbelievable. So I'm pretty happy with those. I know this again was a shorter episode, but it is what it is. Sometimes they gotta be like that when things screw up. Brian Hoyer, oh that's another thing. People wanted me to go like potentially get Jimmy Garoppolo which we could do, but I'm not trying to give up a second round pick for Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm not. People want it to happen, but I mean, unless I can get him for a deep, like a, a real steal, I'm not trying to. I'll see if they have any interest in our quarterbacks. A little bit. What about Brian Hoyer for Jimmy Garoppolo? Ooh, okay. Okay. New development. Interesting. Interesting development going on here. What do we have at left outside linebacker? Eli Harold and Dakota Watson. What do you think about Dakota Watson? Interesting. Middle linebacker. Brock Coyle is... He's got the no trade on. Eric Reed's been playing really well, although I still don't want to keep him. Left end. Elvis Dumerville is a guy that's played really well. Aaron Lynch I don't want to part with just yet. And then at center. Daniel Kilgore sucks, but he's our starting center. What if I were to give you Dakota Watson and a... A fourth next year. Interesting. What about a fourth this year? Interesting. What about a third? I'd be in on this actually. Okay. That's a that's a massive trade. Brian Hoyer, Dakota Watson, and a third for Jimmy Garoppolo. I think in real life it was a second round pick that was traded. So basically the equivalent of that, we're gonna say Brian Hoyer counts for like a little bit towards that second round and Dakota Watson, whatever. Jimmy Garoppolo is the new starting quarterback of the loss of the San Francisco 49ers. A new era, quick development as well. Welcome to Jimmy World. I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. This somehow was an incredibly productive episode and Jimmy Garoppolo We'll see his first start against the Dallas Cowboys in week seven. I will see you there. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.